So let's talk about counterfeits. How far they have advanced. Uh, what are they exactly counterfeiting? What type of cards are counterfeiting? And where I see the future of counterfeits. So about 10 years ago, I met this guy. His name was Daosin Huang. We talked on Skype. Um, he was in China. I speak Mandarin. And he gave me a proposal. Hey, I'm going to print 10,000 Tamagoyfs. At that point, Tamagoyf was the it card. This was um, around the time that Tamagoyf just got reprinted and the price actually in Modern Masters 1 went up. So the Tamagoyf went from a $100 card to a $200 card as it got reprinted. And the only issue he had at the time, he had two issues at the time, the paper wasn't right and the kerning of certain letters was a little off. So he proposed that for a low price of $1,000, he would print me 10,000 Tamagoyfs and he would send the first 100 Tamagoyfs as a sign of good faith over to me. I dialogued the chat. You can still see it in the earliest videos right now. In fact, there's a live stream. If it's easier for you to find, there's actually just a live stream talking about counterfeits. 10 years later, he has a whole factory. He actually is on YouTube. I'm not going to tell you what channel he's on, um, but he's on YouTube and he is printing magic cards and showing the quality, showing it past UV test, showing it past the light test, showing it past the bend test. He does the water droplet test. So he has videos on YouTube showing his new machinery that he uses purposely for Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So if you've ever been to China, you know that they don't play card games there. Um, I have most of my, outside my sister, my mom, my dad, and then my niece, nephew, and so on. Um, my extended family, they're all from China. So whenever I go visit, they play Mahjong, they play, you know, uh, they, poker isn't even popular in China. I love poker, but people don't play that uh, in China. They play 40, Sisyphen, and so on. They play other games specific to their culture, right? Uh, Wei Chi, I love that game. So instead of playing chess, you play Go. And it never occurred to Dowson that anyone would pay more than, because he previous, and, and the reason this is so interesting is he previous to doing a magic counterfeits full time was making poker cards. So he, his business was a legit business making poker cards for not bicycle, but like a second brand, right? So he already had the printing facilities. He already had cardboard stock. He already had everything he needed to do. And, 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 and when we were talking, it, it became really like, he didn't understand why is a card a hundred dollars? Why is a card 10 cents? Because he's just used to po printing poker cards, and the poker card, the value of a you know ace is probably the same value because it takes the same amount of money to print. So the ink, um, and this is I think Magic: The Gathering's biggest weakness in terms of anti counterfeiting, the ink, the cardboard, it's all very cheap and readily available at a manufacturing. In fact, um, let me tell you a story about Alpha and Beta. So and. There was a guy who approached me. He supposedly had a bunch of alpha cards, but they were actually beta cards clipped. And the the reason that um, you can tell you can tell if it's pushed in, pushed out, and that difference is only because people who were clipping it were clipping it with you know scissors or something like that, very low pressure. They didn't have the commercial clipping. You know when the commercial cutters with, that would put tons of pressure, right? When you're talking about a commercial clipper or whatever, you, you, when you're talking about like clipping with little scissors, yeah, it's going to fray. Yes, it's going to look uneven. And yes, it's going to not have that indent to it. So when you talk about the difference between alpha and clipped beta, it can look very close. But if you know what you're looking at, you, you know that the pressure is off because one person's using scissors that they bought at Walmart and the other person's using a $10,000 cutting machine. So my, my idea is always, and this is what I thought would happen down the road and it's already happened is one of these big Chinese manufacturers, they would see that, Hey, this game is worth it for me. The, um, 
DPI up to 300p, they're all actually online. You can download them all today. I could, I could find them today on probably 4chan and download them all. And I, if I had the, if I had a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars to invest in the printing equipment. And so this isn't like a ragtag group of random people in a garage. This is a commercial printing facility that in the previous iteration was just printing poker cards, right? And selling them on Alibaba. But now instead of printing poker cards, they spend the same amount of resources, energy, ink, and paper, and they can print and sell for 1000X some magic counterfeits. And if you go on Alibaba, um, if you go on AliExpress, you go on Etsy, I mean, Etsy has got tons of proxies. They call it, so there, there's two ways to do it, right? There's one way, oh, it's a proxy. It's a realistic proxy. So you're telling them, hey, it's fake. Other than that, you can actually just sell it. And people say, oh, well, you know, what about graded cards? <laughs> they can also fake graded cards. It's actually, it's, it's pretty interesting. I've seen this factory. Um, it's occasionally, he, uh, you know, occasionally um, his videos pop up on my feed. I click on it and he spent a lot of money on, so back to the alpha and beta thing, a lot of times when you're clipping a beta to make it look like an alpha, you're losing a lot of money because clearly it's clipped. So not only do you not have an alpha, you have something called clip beta. And the way that you would tell is the pressure point. Well, what if you didn't have those issues? What if you didn't have, and I always wondered this, what if you had a bunch of beta and you had a, call it a premier $40,000 cutting machine, exact precision. I mean, you've seen how what 3D printing models can do nowadays, for like 400 bucks on Amazon. I'm talking about you pay, you know, you going all out, getting the commercial. Couldn't you print, again, now I know some alpha and beta cards have different, um, different uh, tax and different like kerning and different stuff. I understand that, but a lot of them don't. A lot of them, the only difference is just the, the edge. I always thought, hey, well, if you're gonna spend, you know, if, if the difference between alpha black lotus and a beta black lotus is let's say 100K, then is it worth spending $20,000 on a machine that can clip it perfect? And would people even know? Anyway, that's always what I thought. If you, I always believed if you spent a hundred, two million dollars on your own, you already have a printing factory because you're already in this business, right? It isn't, it isn't scary to you to buy two million dollars equipment because you already bought two million dollars equipment. You already have a sunken cost. Then, instead of printing poker cards or cigarette, you know, cartons, which is basically what they were doing at the time pick a different paper, you know, have the same DPI, right? And uh, and then just print proxies. Would be interesting. It would, it would be at least as an exercise, very interesting, I would say. Anyway, guys, 